So next we'll move on to stroke appearances. We've got no need for the symbols panel, so I'm going to close that down. And then we're going to focus on the layer called root. So I'll turn on the visibility of that layer and then I will left click in that layer to highlight it. And I need to pick up my zoom tool just so I can zoom in a bit closer to the red path out of the two. We've got a red and a blue path. And with that on screen, I'm then going to go up to the window menu and choose new window. And then that gives me a second tab across the top, as we saw in the first chapter. And I'll split the view of those two windows, which again is of the same document in two separate windows. And then with my zoom tool still active, I'm going to zoom into the lower portion of where that path is so that we can see some of those characteristics nice and clearly on screen. So we've got a nice split view now. And of course, to edit that, well, I really need to go to the window menu and then go down to stroke that pops up on screen and it's going to hold down the space bar to get a nice clear view of the whole of the path on that left hand side window. And you'll find that with a stroke panel, many of the options are hidden to start off with. So you could go to the panel flyout menu and choose show options, or you could go to the toggle just adjacent to the word stroke and left click on that twice, reveal all the options. I'll switch to my selection tool. And then of course I'll have to select my path to make edits to it. So from here, as we've seen in the past, you can increase or decrease the weight, which is the thickness of the stroke. So we can tap up to increase that, or you can use the drop down menu and you can choose from one of the presets in there. If I just choose 10 to start off with, get a really big noticeable stroke on screen and I'll reduce it a little bit later. From the options just underneath, you've got cap, which is the appearance of the ends of the line. So you can see here that this is an open path. We've got a start and we've got an end to the path. And by default, your path will end abruptly where the end anchor points are. And that's denoted by cap and it's called a book cap. Now I can change this to rounded cap and that puts a rounded appearance on the ends. Or there is the other one, which is slightly more niche and which is called projecting cap, which just simply takes the thickness of the stroke and wraps it around the ends. I'm just going to set this back to book cap for now. And then you'll see that we have corner options. So we've got mitre joint, we've got a rounded joint. So if I left click on this, you'll notice that the elbow joint, so to speak, of this path now are rounded. And then we've got bevel joint, which just takes a slither off the corners in there. And again, I'm going to leave that set to corner. Now, if we had a close path, we could choose to align the path, not just to the center, but also to the inside of the path or the outside of the path. And it's not relevant for us in this case. Ultimately, what I want to do with this is I want to change this stroke from a solid line to a dotted line. Now, that's not something that is very obvious inside of Illustrator. There is an option to turn on a dashed line and that's what we get. And you'll see in here that we have fields for the dash length and the gap length. So by default, you'll get a 12 point dash, which in my case is red. Rather confusingly, it looks as though we shouldn't have a gap in here because it's set to zero. But um, if it's set to zero or there is nothing in the gap field, then it will be exactly the same length as the dash. So you can vary those. But from here to create a dotted line, what we have to do is go back up to the cap option and then change it to a rounded cap. And what you'll notice is that each of those dashes now essentially are treated like a separate stroke. They've got a rounded end on each of them. And you have to bear in mind as well that the weight does have a bearing on all these properties. But if I go down to the dash in here, what I really need to do is change the gap first. So I'll swipe over that value and then I'll type in say five and press return. And you'll notice that those lines now are much closer together. If I change that now to say 12 again, I reinstate the gap between them. But to get a dotted line, what we really need to do is remove all of the length off the dash in there. So I'm going to set that to zero and then press return and we get our dotted line. Now, before I change anything else, I am going to reduce the weight of the stroke because that will have a huge bearing on the overall appearance. So you'll notice that the lighter the stroke, the smaller the dots will become. So I'll leave that set to four points for now. And then I just need to adjust the dash in here. So I'm going to tap down with the cursor key and that will reduce the gap between each of those dots. Finally, you can, uh, you can add arrowheads to this. So down at the bottom here, you've got an arrowhead for the start and the end. Now, if I change that, I can add, for example, in here, 
a bar. And that will put an arrowhead on the beginning of the path. Now, you'll tend to find that generally the arrowheads do look quite large on your path. So underneath that uh, arrowhead, you have a scale. And if I set that to say 40% and press return, that bar gets much smaller. But you'll have to bear in mind that the dot also now is running over that region. So I will take that off just for now. Scroll back up, set that to none, and then I'll go to the end and I'll choose arrow seven. And you'll notice again that it is incredibly large. So again, I'll swipe over that value, type in 30 and press return. And I get an arrowhead in there, which is a little bit better in size. And if I just increase the size of that, and it just hides the dot that's inside of there. And that creates the appearance of my stroke.